Now I'm going to demonstrate the partial differences method for subtraction. It's much like partial sums with some key differences for subtraction. So again, I'm going to start go work from left to right, and I'm going to work by place value. However, I do have to be aware of which number is larger on top, and I'll explain that in a moment. So I start with my hundreds column. I have 400 minus 200. So over here, I think to myself, 400 minus 200. Now, since the 4 was on top, the larger number was on top, which is what we're used to in subtraction, I'm going to keep that as 200. We can think of it as positive 200 or plus 200. I move on to my tens column. 6 tens is 60, 7 tens is 70. Now, you notice right away, 60 minus 70. Our students don't know how to do negative numbers yet, and that's okay here. So instead, I'm just going to forget the order for a second and think of this as 70 minus 60. If I do 70 minus 60, I get 10. And I line these up in columns. Once again, very important to line everything up. However, since the smaller number was on top, instead of this being a positive or a plus, it's going to be a negative or subtraction. And then I look at my ones column. Again, you can see that my smaller number is on top. So if the students would like, they can go right ahead and put a negative right away before they do anything else, before they forget it, and they think, what is 5 minus 3? Because again, we're not going to deal with negative numbers, and technically what they are doing is subtra um, subtracting and coming up with negatives just in a reverse way. So 5 minus 3, giving them 2, and that's going to be minus since it was in the wrong order. Now. They can't just add here because we do have two subtraction signs. If these were all plus signs, they could add as normal just like an addition. So this does add an extra step, which can be a little cumbersome. Some of it does work. Some of it we can do in our heads. But if they can't, that's okay. They can just bring it over here and do two numbers at a time since you can't subtract the two numbers at the same time. So they would come over here and, um, and subtract everything and then subtract the two. Just being careful here not to make mathematical errors, which I hope I am not, and they would get 188 as their final answer. Again, we would always encourage them to go back, do it the standard method, to check their work. But again, this is the partial differences method. It simply starts from left to right, and it works by place value, which is what it teaches. Next, we'll try the trade first method. Now, this is the trade first method for subtraction. It's going to look a lot like standard subtraction, the only difference being we're going to do all of our trades first. We're going to make sure we borrow or trade, however you want to say it, first before we try to do any subtraction at all. So I start over here, like I do on the right usually, and I think 3 minus 5. I can't do it. So I'm going to go ahead and borrow from the 6. becomes a 5. 3 becomes a 13. Now I know I can do that column. Now it's tempting to go ahead and do 13 minus 5, but I'm not going to do that quite yet. I want to make sure I get all my trades done first. So look at my 10s column. 5 minus 7. We can't do it. So we're going to go ahead and trade that too. 4 becomes a 3, 5 becomes a 15. Now I can do the tens column, and I can also do the hundreds column. So now I can do all of my subtraction now. My trades are all out of the way. So 13 minus 5 is 8. 15 minus 7 is 8. 3 minus 2 is 1. Now the great thing about this method is if we happen to trade when we don't need to, it will still come out. So for example, if I change the problem slightly and make it 463 and... 251, let's say. I can still do the problem. If I trade wrong, this method will still work because I can fix it at the end. So let's say I didn't think I could do 3 minus 1, and I trade it anyway and made that a 13 minus 1. I would do my 13 minus 1 and notice, ooh, I have a 12 here. So all I need to do is kind of go back to my column addition method, keep it in a column, and continue. 5 minus 5, 4 minus 2. Now, since I know that 12 can't stay there, I would keep the 2, send the 1 over to the 0, that becomes a 1, and then my 2 stays. So basically, it's still, I was still able to get the problem right, even though I might have traded wrong. As opposed to the standard method, where you do your trades and subtract, you can't really catch that mistake at the end. So this is the trade first method for subtraction.